Are you spending the money in your HSA on healthcare expenses every year? Strike one. Are you aware that you can invest the funds in your HSA? Strike three. The HSA is the perfect investment account and it is hiding in plain sight. HSA stands for health savings account, but that is not how it should be used. Everyone is arguing about Roth versus traditional IRA, while the HSA low-key crushes both. If Roth is a spoon and traditional IRA is a fork, then the HSA is a spork. It combines all the best properties of both IRAs. Most people don't know that you can actually invest your HSA funds through most of the major stock brokerages. As an example, I invest my HSA cash through Charles Schwab. I can buy individual stocks from publicly traded companies, I can invest in index funds or actively managed funds, and so much more. Being able to invest this money for retirement and take advantage of all of the available strategies that are unique to the HSA is huge. The HSA is the only triple tax advantage account. First, you can shield your income from taxes when you deposit funds into the HSA. This helps you by decreasing your tax bill, which in turn leaves you with more money for you to spend or invest elsewhere. Unfortunately, in 2023, you are only allowed to contribute 3,850 to your HSA annually. If I was able to, I would put more. Second, anything that goes on inside the account is shielded from taxes like dividends and capital gains. In a typical brokerage account, if you want to sell one stock or share to buy another, you have to pay taxes if you made any money on that first transaction, which majorly slows down your gains over time. Third, when you withdraw cash from the account for healthcare expenses, it is tax-free. Not having to pay any taxes on the total capital gains or dividends can save you 15 or 20% depending on your tax bracket. If you are 65 or older, you can spend the money in your HSA on non-healthcare expenses, but you will have to pay income tax on that amount. It is important that you do not break this rule. Spending money from your HSA on non-healthcare expenses before the age of 65 will result in a 20% penalty. The reason I compare the HSA to a spork is because it is like a Roth and a traditional IRA combined, the spoon and the fork. First, the HSA is similar to the traditional IRA because both shield your income from taxes when you deposit. Putting your money in these accounts effectively lowers your income, which results in lower taxes. Second, the Roth IRA allows you to withdraw funds from the account tax-free, just like the HSA, when you spend the money on healthcare. And finally, in all three of these accounts, HSA, Roth, and traditional IRA, they all allow you to buy and sell stocks and shares within the account without paying any taxes on dividends or capital gains. The huge tax savings and subsequent investment gains are the primary reason the HSA crushes both the traditional and the Roth IRAs. Shortly, I will get into a couple examples using actual numbers so you can see just how much money we're talking about, but there are other advantages. First, it is common for employers to make HSA contributions as a part of their compensation. Free money that compounds over time at a huge tax discount makes a huge difference. Second, you can pull money out at any time tax-free for medical reasons. With a traditional IRA, if you pull that money out for any reason before the age 59 and a half, not only do you get taxed, but you also have to pay a 10% penalty. For the Roth IRA, you can only take out the principal. You can't take out any of the gains. So for a medical emergency, the HSA is going to be way more flexible than these other two accounts. Finally, and this one is a bit more work, but you can reimburse yourself for medical expenses at any time. For instance, you can reimburse yourself at the age of 65 for expenses that you had when you were 25. This means that you can keep track of your medical spending throughout your entire life and then withdraw that amount tax-free later in life when you're ready to start pulling money for retirement. Thanks for staying with me this long. If you are enjoying the video, please give me a like down below. It really helps me out with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. One thing is for sure, you will have healthcare expenses in retirement. You are guaranteed to be able to take advantage of the tax-free withdrawals through an HSA. According to CMS.gov, people 65 and older spend on average $22,356 per year on personal health care expenses. If you are in the 22% tax bracket, that comes out to an extra $4,918 per year in tax savings. With that, I think it's time to get into some more numbers. Let's compare the returns from the three different accounts, HSA, Roth, and traditional IRA. First, I gotta list the assumptions that we will use going into this. Let's use a hypothetical investor named Devin. Devin is trying to decide the best way to invest an extra $3,000 in 2023 for retirement. Devin is 30 years old, makes $73,000 per year, and is in the 22% tax bracket. 
Devin's investment of choice is an S&P 500 index fund, which has an historic average annualized return of about 9.5%. However, after adjusting for inflation, the average annualized return drops down to about 6.6%. If Devin chooses to contribute that $3,000 to a Roth IRA at the age of 30, after 35 years of investing in the S&P 500, Devin will have about $28,095. Because Devin invested in a Roth IRA, 100% of this money can be withdrawn tax-free. If Devin chooses to go with a traditional IRA, then Devin can actually afford to invest $3,846. This is because of the 22% tax savings that you get from shielding your income in the traditional IRA. If you invest $3,846 in a traditional IRA, then you pay exactly $846 less in taxes, but only cost you $3,000 to invest. So Devin invests $3,846 in his traditional IRA in the S&P 500 over 35 years with historically average annualized returns, then it will grow to about $36,017. However, Devin will have to pay income tax on that money when it is withdrawn from the IRA. If Devin is still in the 22% tax bracket at the age of 65, then $36,017 turns into about $28,095. The same as the Roth IRA. If Devin is in a lower tax bracket at this age, then the traditional IRA would come out on top over the Roth IRA. Finally, Devin makes the correct choice and decides to invest $3,000 in the HSA. Just like with the traditional IRA, Devin can invest $3,846 in the HSA because of the tax savings. The initial investment will also grow to about $36,017 over 35 years in the S&P 500 with historically average annualized returns. But the HSA pulls ahead on the withdrawal because the additional tax savings. If we also assume that Devin will have average medical expenses at the age of 65, then $22,356 can be withdrawn tax-free for those expenses, and only the remaining $13,661 will be tax. If we continue to assume that Devin is in the 22% tax bracket, then the final amount comes out to $33,012. This is about $4,917 greater than either the Roth or the traditional IRA, getting an additional 17.5% return. And keep in mind, this is the gain from one year's worth of investing. If Devin continues this trend from the age of 30 to 65, then you can multiply those gains 35 times, which is about $172,000. When you put it in terms of investing over your whole life, you can see that investing in the HSA makes a huge difference. I hope I have convinced you to stop spending your HSA funds every year on your personal healthcare expenses. Instead, you should consider viewing your HSA as a retirement investing account that should only be touched in a health emergency. Since you are only allowed to deposit a certain amount each year, you do not want to waste that investment. If you enjoyed my rants on the power of the HSA and would like to learn more about the debate between traditional and Roth IRAs, check out this video. Until next time.